There we go. Hey! hey! Surprise, surprise, Janelle's late again. She's not here, where is she? Janelle! Should I play the part of Janelle? Janelle? Okay, sure. Oipa! <laughs> Did I say it right? No, you made her Greek. <laughs> You're like Opa and Waipa. Opa! <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we got a, a fun one for you today. There's a brand new survey out that um, aggregates data from Google searches. And they figured out by each state, what was the top should I question asked? So for specificity's sake, imagine David Safransky, president and founder of Edgewater Investment Group, sitting down at his computer. That's what he does. Somebody goes, what should I invest in? He goes, hey, Google, uh, what should I tell this person to do? You know? No, no. You sit down, you type in, should I? And each state, we have the top answer for what they, what they wrote. Uh-huh. <laughs> you have any requests you want to hear? Any states you want Go to hear? California first, because they're the weirdest. California, the top should I search. Should I shave my head? <laughs> what in the world? Yeah. That is out there. Uh, what about another one? Ask me another one. Alabama. Alabama, should I diet? Yes. I mean, yes. asking Google that. <laughs> um, a bunch of states. Mash it, mash it, uh, thank you for coming to work. Hola. I played the part of you. I said, you did? Uh, what did I say? Oipa. Oipa. Epa. <laughs> <laughs> so, Michigan, Minnesota, Delaware, District of Columbia. Oh, I know what Michigan was. I know what Michigan was. All of them oh, were the man. same. Should I move to Ohio so I could be a winner? Oh, right. right? Oh, yeah, I, like I could one. win a football game already. That's also, <laughs> asking this That's question, New Mexico, they all asked, should I care? Should I care? Now, was there anything after that? Should I nope. care? Yeah, that's weird. Nope. Um, how about this one? Florida, uh, no, sorry, Georgia. Should I text him? <laughs> <laughs> Our friends in Pennsylvania, theirs is my very favorite. I've told you this already. Uh, stand by. Pennsylvania. Should I break up with my boyfriend? <laughs> what does that say about men in Pennsylvania? Adrian, Here. thank you for telling me. She said Brian threw you under the bus again. Yeah, uh, what you were you late were doing? again. How many days in a <laughs> row is this woman going to be late for overtime? Uh, it's not uh, late time. It's, uh, it's terrible. So uh, we can answer West Virginia's question. What is it? West, West Virginia's should I question. Should I move? <laughs> yes. Why, Ryan? What's wrong with West Virginia? I just drove through. Move up here. It sits much better here. I thought it was should I get front teeth. <laughs> Bad. <laughs> if you're from West Virginia, we're not talking about you. It's, uh, yeah, it's the other guy. Uh, Deborah. Oh, what? Sorry, I was just gonna say hi to people. I like saying hi. To but the the top should I question for Ohio is actually no surprise. Insightful, oh thoughtful, intellectual, intellectual, mm -hmm. superior. You know, we're better in Intellectually Ohio. demanding. Yeah, it really is. Mm -hmm. Spiritual in nature, in some respects, depending on how you look at it. Yes. Should I quit my job? Mm. Deep. Now, there's a lot behind that question. Somebody texted in wisely. They said, boy, if I were an employer, I would seriously be thinking in 2020 about my workplace environment. If the top question in Ohio, should I quit my job? And it goes to what uh, Dave was saying about the rate of quit quitting throughout the country. Yes, the quit rate. The, the quit rate. Explain so the, the quit yeah. rate for the uh, the Facebook peeps here. So the, the people, the I'm not twelve. Rate, the quit rate is a number that uh, people like me follow because it is uh, an economic indicator of how strong the economy is. So the higher the quit rate, the the better the economy is oh. because people feel like they could go out and either get more money or a better workplace or a better environment in general, so they're more willing to leave their job now. And and the quit rate right now is at almost an all-time high as for as long as we've tracked it, which doesn't surprise me because we're living in one of the greatest economic times, certainly of your lifetime, Brian. Uh, you're a little younger sure than Janelle. You know. uh, little younger. It's true. A little younger. Oh, my God. <laughs> We're just speaking truth, go ahead. Yeah, so the, the, the economic times are so vibrant right now and so great that people have a lot of options that they didn't have in an economy that wasn't so great. And so, and we also have five million unfilled jobs right now. So there is a lot of opportunity for people to better their situation. And what, what you'll see is in economic times that are not as good, 
people are afraid to leave their job because what if they don't get another job right away? How are they going to pay their bills? Uh, what about new golf clubs? How are you going to buy those? Right? right. So, which yeah. is always something on my mind. Where am I going to get my next new golf club from that's going to improve my game? So, this is a question that I think Christians ask, and I think there's a specific way that Christians ought to answer this question because we know that wisdom comes from an abundance of counselors. That that principle is portrayed a number of times in Scripture. So let's just say, I, I want you to answer this too. Like if somebody were to come to you, Christian, and say, should I quit my job? Which is the top should I question in Ohio for 2019? What are you going to say? Like how do you help them answer that question? We'll let David go first. David's like, yes. <laughs> right so now. Where I like to begin is with some what I call probative questions. Okay, so let's, instead of just telling somebody what to do, try to find out. Why are you thinking that way? What is it about your current situation that would cause that question to arise? And how do you think that the current situation is going to be bettered by changing jobs? So what is, what is it in particular that you're thinking that you need to quit your job or it's come up that you want to quit your job? Why? What, what's going on? And once we, once we kind of get to the heart of the matter, then we could say, well, yeah, there, there might be a better place for you. And now, again, some of you are asking, again, it's an article, the most Googled should I question in your state. And the top should I question in Ohio was should I quit my job? So that's what we're trying to figure mm -hmm. out. What, what do you say to somebody as a follower of Christ? By the way, this is not me asking should I quit my job. I think some of you. Are you sure? People are like, absolutely, yes, quit, quit, uh, Brian. Callie, internet yeah, I know, exactly. <laughs> Callie says, should I listen to Brian Janelle in the morning? That's, that's her question to go Yes. Back. Yes. <laughs> but no, I mean, because see, I, I think some people go, I don't feel like I'm, like I'd rather serve in ministry full time than do this job. Mm. Should I quit my job? Mm -hmm. You think the people are tough at your job getting the ministry? <laughs> yeah. Right? I mean, it's a tough business. Like, but. like you're not necessarily supposed to fulfill your calling, your God-given calling in your profession. Uh-huh. We're only called in our professions to work as if we're working for the Lord. No, but I think there's callings that people get that have nothing to do with ministry. It, and I, maybe calling is like a big word, but I think you can feel if God wants you in a certain place. And it could be medicine or a plumber. You don't think you could... So it, it doesn't have to be, well, you know, not, the Lord doesn't call everybody to ministry. Yeah, no, it could God be that a person plumbers. feeling like... I don't think I'm where I'm like where God wants me. You see what I'm saying? And, yeah. and where He wants you still be the marketplace. Well, you know, I feel like God has called me to finance. I, I have a, I have an opportunity to have a really powerful impact with people because so much of our lives kind of revolve. When you think about the centers of our universe, everything that's going on, money is in the that center for. You know, we need money. It's not the most important thing in life, but it is an important thing. And so uh, you could tell a lot about a person by the way they handle their checkbook. And you could tell what's really important. And, and the Bible talks about money frequently, more than, almost more than any other subject. And so it is an important thing. And if we handle it well, it, it reflects well on our walk and where we're at and how we're thinking. And so I feel called to this what I'm doing, but not everybody does. Uh, so there are some people who go to work and they clock in and they do their work and then they clock out. There are other people who go to work and it's kind of their mission field. Yes. Exactly. So it is their mission field. When I first went to the Amazon, I, I loved it so much. And I, I came back and I told my wife and my pastor, I think I need to go there. Mm -hmm. I think That's I need cool. to be there. My pastor said, well, it, it, well amigo, pump the brakes. Uh, we need you here. We need you here to send people there, to raise money, yeah. to go there. And, and I have that ability because I've never been afraid to ask somebody for a check, right? See, Some people say, you're always asking me for money. And I say, yes, I know. Now give it to me so I can give it to them. So I spend more time in denial than in the Amazon. The river? <laughs> denial. 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 So we have several <laughs> clarifications. <laughs> Several clarifications and a question that's coming in by different people. Mm -hmm. Number one, Callie's saying no. What she meant to say is that's what people around should ask. 
should they look up Brian and Janelle. Uh, and then good, a yeah. couple of people actually want And I have an answer to this before Dave answers. One it. person is saying, Janelle, slip a question to Dave and please ask, who is his suit designer? And then somebody else asked, can you ask Dave if he dressed himself today? <laughs> <laughs> he did dress himself. <laughs> is that good His or bad? <laughs> special yes, you thanks look really good to today. Walmart for Dave's suit Walmart. today. <laughs> Thank you, Walmart, for the suit. So suits are like your animals for grown-ups, right? You buy a suit. They never sell you a suit with, like, red pants and an orange jacket. They always match, so it's really easy to wear a suit. Yeah. Uh, but... I if still have my wedding look, suit, by the way. if people are going to stare, give them a reason. Hey, Hence, I give you this. Hey. Look well, I, I actually still have my my tenth grade homecoming suit. In I'm my sure closet. you do. Was it double breasted? Tell me it was. Yes, double. it was double. It was. I knew it. My, <laughs> my dad took me. My dad took me to Men's Warehouse, and he got me a double breasted suit. Yeah, there, there's there's two yeah. kinds of people who wear suits. There's the double breasted people, and usually it's hanging in their closet from tenth grade. And then there's suit people. So when I was playing in a band, I went out and I got a five button suit. Now that was cool. No, well, now four button, five button, that's a stylish thing. You got to be cool. Careful. But if I go to a, if I'm talking to my, to the suit people and they're trying to talk me into a double breasted, I am automatically think they don't like me. <laughs> they're trying to sell me a double breasted. Do you believe I wore a five button? With a little purple tie? I do believe it. Yeah. Dark glass. I was Pocket square? Good. Pocket square? Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah. Playing my bass. Yeah. Anyway, it's not about me. So should we quit our job? Should I quit my job? Top Google question uh, asked. I want you to analyze some answers we've heard here. What would you to say, so, say to someone who asked this top question to ask Google in Ohio, the should I quit my job question? David Jeremiah has some answers to this in terms of five principles for biblical decision making. Mm -hmm. Number one, your best decisions reflect your values. Mm -hmm. I like that. And it could apply in this situation, like, is there something that is a moral dilemma in your job that does not, is that reflective of your values that you're being asked to do? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, but when you read that, I also thought, um, is what's being asked of you sacrificing your value and your priority, like in terms of time with family, et cetera? Because I think some jobs pay you great. But they sacrifice time with your family. I think, especially in healthcare, though, too, where you might be asked to do something that oh, would yes. really be against every moral fiber yeah. of your body and of your faith. And how are you going to handle that? What are you going to do? But in almost every other circumstance, wouldn't you say, David, that since the Bible indicates that if you not if you don't care for your own family as in your believer, you're worse than an unbeliever. So it's unwise unless you're facing one of these real moral dilemmas mm -hmm. to just quit a job without a plan? Well, I, I, I think what I would do, if, if that were really happening, if it were to that point, I think it's time for a family meeting yeah. and to talk about with your family because you don't make decisions in a vacuum. They affect everybody, your kids, your spouse, everything that they're going to do. Um, so I think it, it has to be something that you bring everybody. Everybody has got to be on board with this and on the team for it to work. And, and, and I think it could be a, a really important and powerful teachable moment for somebody to say, look, yeah, I, I do make a lot of money, but I'm not willing to make it for this. God would not yeah. want this. And so if, if it comes to that point, and hopefully, you know, it may for a lot of people, but hopefully it doesn't. Adrian wisely saying, I would need to know their reasoning behind it before I could answer them. Yeah, you'd have to ask them, why do you want to quit your job? Probative questions. Yeah. Um, you're, uh, it also says big decisions are birthed in an atmosphere of prayer. Mm -hmm. Like you got to spend time praying about it. And to go with that, David Jeremiah also says making big decisions, your best decisions take time. Oh yeah, Len says that. Like you shouldn't just like get mad at your boss for a minute and just go, I quit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to say I've never done that before, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, I was much younger. I was yeah, much, like much younger. Len approaches decisions like that. He always says nothing good comes out of decisions made in haste. Right. And he's I'm right. the one that's like, let's go. He's like, no. <laughs> so but, and, and it, what he's really hard. saying is slow your roll. Slow your roll. Slow your, roll. Slow your horses. What's that? Hold your Hold horses. Hold your horses. Pump the brakes. Yeah. Slow your roll. 
Dave loves to say that like he's cool. Three piece is classy. Mike likes his three piece. Um, David Jeremiah also says your best decisions heed wisdom from others, as in clearest proverb, Proverbs twelve fifteen, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes, mm -hmm. but he who heeds counsel is wise. So I'll, I'll tell you where I use this. Um, we we do some very complicated trading things, okay, and. Sometimes you look at it and it makes total sense to me. Uh, I write it down, we chart it out, we do everything. But then we will, I will, I always have a contact that I call and I say, hey, let me, let me say this to you and you stop me when I've done something stupid. Just, I want a, I want a second stop. set of eyes. I want a second stop. set of eyes on something. <laughs> and usually in your church, Brian, in your church, there's going to be somebody who's got the wisdom that you need, you know, it's, it's like. But generic. you don't want a yes person. You want no, a person don't. who's going to tell you the yeah. truth. You want somebody to say your hairstyle looks stupid. Stop doing that. Uh, <laughs> you want that person. Even you know, hopefully, th I don't always say things to people. I don't always count couch them in euphemisms. Sometimes I just say it. My wife likes to say sometimes you might want to consider a glue stick as opposed to the chapstick. But I like what I have to say. You know, if somebody's asking me, is that what she advice, says to you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it, it took me a minute, <laughs> but I really like that. <laughs> so surprised I haven't heard that before. You're, I, I am too. So you want somebody who's going to give you the truth. The, the best thing that you could have is somebody who's going to be honest with you. No, absolutely, absolutely. But they're in your church. That's why you know God puts you in a church for a reason. It's like marriage. God doesn't put two people that are exactly alike together. One of you is useless. So in a church, there's going to be somebody that's got wisdom, and they're trustworthy to keep things confidential, right? There's nothing worse than gossip, very divisive. So find somebody who's trustworthy and honest. Um, Daniel says, uh, is the mic, where's the mic? Can you ask Dave to speak closer to the mic? Uh, it's everywhere. Oh, wait, i got to put this up here. Sorry. Okay. It fell down. I don't know why it fell. I think you were laughing at one of my jokes, and uh, you yeah, bumped the problem. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> I won't stay up here. I'm struggling with life, people. Um, there was another point in another article I found on, on making uh, decide if you should quit your job or whatever, uh, making wise decisions. What possible motives are driving my decision? As in Proverbs 16, 2, all the ways of man are clear in his own sight, but the Lord weighs the motives. Mm -hmm. Like you really got to decide for yourself. Why am I making this decision? And is my motive godly and biblical? Right. I, I think a lot of people make financial decisions just based on money. And it, it may feel great to have your bank account be a little fatter. However, you think about the job. If it's, it's, if it's an environment that you don't like or if it's an environment that is antithetical to your faith for the money, you're going to be miserable. Money is generally a really horrible motivator to do things if that's the only motivation that you have. So when you think about your job, you're going to go someplace and you're going to see those people as much as you're going to see your spouse. Yeah. And if they make you miserable, now you're going to be miserable when you get home too. So I would rather take less money a lot of times than more money and be miserable. It's just not worth it. Another piece of advice from an article I found, have I considered the possible outcomes for my course of action? Like, ha I, I, as I've called this before, be a then what thinker. You've got to be able to look at the next step mm -hmm. and go, let's say I quit this job. What will be the outcome? Relationally, right. spiritually, mm -hmm. professionally, financially, all those things have to be considered before you can really make that big of a decision. Yeah, I, I always, when I make a change, I want it to be a change to the upside, right? Now, there are times in my life where I've made lateral moves because I thought it was going to position me better for the long run, better place, better environment, whatever, but always leading to something. And so it helps to have an end game in mind. So I always start with the end in mind at the beginning. I used to, I've told you this story about the mazes. We'd go on vacation, my mom would buy me a maze book, and my brother. I'd always finish first. You could never figure out why. I always started at the end. There's only one way out at the end. And so you cheated. 
Well, no, I had better genes. Basically. I did not cheat. There were no rules on the page. Nobody said you got to start at the beginning. So I always, and I applied that to my life where what do I want to see happen? What do I want the end to look like? Now, how am I going to get there? Where am I at now? And how am I going to get to this end? And if you're married, you're, your spouse has to agree on that end game too. If you're, yes. again, you don't operate in a vacuum. When you get married, you've given up a lot of self. That's right. should be. To, and, and so yeah. now we have to operate as a team. And there has to be consensus on this in a way there that makes sense. There has to be consensus. Sense. Yes. And, and uh, so I think that's important. Uh, could this decision, another thing to consider, jeopardize my integrity or hinder my witness for the Lord? Mm. You, get, you get one chance to ruin your integrity. And that's then it's right. gone. And believe me, uh, and I've seen this happen with people where integrity was compromised they get brought back into the fold at some point in time but in the back of everybody's mind is that one time it takes a lifetime to build up your integrity your reputation the things that you've done it takes one second to ruin it all it takes one bad decision yeah absolutely um before we uh, wrap up today a piece of follow-up on the live show you you taught us something new that I've heard from an attorney about. Did you hear how big that sounds? Mm -hmm. I've heard from an attorney. From your legal team. From your legal team. Yes, well, that'd be even better. From my legal team. You <laughs> said that there is a feminine version of executor. Yes. Go ahead. Explain that while I look at this note. It's uh, called executrix. That's if you're execu if the person who's going to administer your estate through pay probate after you've assumed room temperature, if that person is a female, she's called the executrix. Did you see the text that came in? There's another one that came in? Yeah, there's a text, not a ma not an email, and it was a person that works for an attorney. She said, is executrix is correct, I work for an attorney, we use it for wills. Uh, Nathan Zion Esquire, attorney your, at law. Your legal team. Also happens to be Kathleen's husband and a friend. He and a dad. Me. He's a dad. Yeah. <laughs> His first text go, bro? was, uh, this discussion sounds like the, uh, the unauthorized practice of law. It is <laughs> not. And then he goes, it just got off the horn with my local bar association, and they think a debate on executor versus executrix is somewhat of a gray area. So we'll let this slide. Uh. <laughs> well, Interesting. Thank you, Nathan. And, and he congratulations. Says, he also says that executrix has fallen out of favor with courts. Mm. Oh. Look, one other thank note. you to my legal team for this help. Again, I'm glad I have my attorney for this. Thank God that baby looks like, like Kathleen. Thank God the baby looks like Kathleen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Don't I sound big time when I talk about it? Brian, you are big time! What are you talking I about? I got a text from an attorney. Not just my mom. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my <laughs> God. Do you have an attorney? Do you know? Yeah. I don't Did it text you? And a CPA. She has a CPA too. She's got, a, my CPA she's got an accounting team. My, my CPA is a bass player. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Slash criminal. <laughs> <laughs> when people say skateboarding isn't a crime, I say, yes, it is. It is a crime. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, anyway, uh, I think we got to run. And Nathan may be watching. He's putting this in here. So, uh, thank you, Nathan Zion Esquire, attorney at law. I'm oh grateful goodness, for your legal assistance. And new father. And, and new, new father, father. Yeah. yes. Imagine how, uh, not that Christmas wasn't going to be wonderful at their house, but you got the new baby, Aww. they got a dog. I mean, it's just like, awesome. it's like a Hallmark movie. It's actually fun to watch Kathleen on Instagram because she's treating her infant kind of like she's a, a little girl and it's her doll, mm -hmm. and she's dressing them up in funny outfits and fun outfits. She's got all like the perfect outfits and like she's taking pictures of the, just dressing up this kid all day long. Uh -huh. Poor kid. At some point, this That's kid's going to go, gonna say. Mom, yeah. stop <laughs> it. It reminds me of that commercial with the Instagram boyfriend. He's like, Sunset Hard Hands, and he's got the taquitos in his hand. He's like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> That's Nathan now. <laughs> Take the picture, Nathan. <laughs> all right, family, love hanging with you. Thanks to Dave Safransky, president and founder of Edgewater Investment Group. Uh, you could get to him through Facebook, I'm sure, but also come to us if you want to reach out to Can Dave. Can you get to me through Facebook? We'd love to talk to you. You're on Facebook. Am I? That's like personal. I am on Facebook. Yeah, good luck spelling Safransky. <laughs> Just <laughs> good luck. Believe me, that has saved me a lot of trouble.
Yeah, Dave is, is, yes. is still available. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but nobody wants it. All right, that's my cue to get out of here. We got to go. Later. Peace out. See you for follow-up Friday.